stage two now. The U.S. government is putting out an urgent call for a platoon of babysitters. It needs help dealing with the crushing influx of children illegally crossing the border in Texas. The Bureau of Customs and Border Protection wants temporary workers who are trained in emergency medicine, health care, child care, and juvenile teaching and counseling. Congressman Michael Burgess of Texas took to the House floor to address so-called immigration reform. The administration. Now, the Border Patrol put out a memo revealing that it plans to staff a processing center along the Arizona border 24 hours a day for the foreseeable future. Joining me now from New York, immigration expert Michael Cutler. Hi, Michael. How are you doing today? I'm great, Tommy. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. My first question for you is the Obama administration is saying, come on in. What do you make of this? Well, you know, I, I believe that it was Rahm Emanuel. So what do you think the Obama administration's motivation is behind this influx? Well, it's the same motivation we've seen from both political parties. So what do you think of the administration deeming this a humanitarian crisis? Is it in fact a humanitarian crisis or more of a national security concern, Michael? Yes and yes. So are women and children just pawns in the Obama administration's game here? Everybody is a pawn. So now, once they're dumped off at these stations in Arizona, Texas, they're supposed to report within 15 days. How likely do you think that this will actually happen based on the honor system? Hmm. That must never be allowed to happen. So do you think this lading, latest dumping practice is just payback to Arizona and Governor Jan Brewer? I don't know. It might be the Chicago way, you know. But, you know, who cares about Americans when there's a political agenda, I guess. And it doesn't look like this influx is going to stop anytime soon. Thanks, Michael. And coming up next, how dare she? Feminine outrage after Miss USA weighs in on the war on women as the Daily Ledger continues. Page three now. Controversy continues to swirl around the Miss USA pageant. The new Miss USA is 24-year-old Nia Sanchez, the former Miss Nevada and fourth-degree black belt in Taekwondo. She got feminist in a tizzy when, as a finalist competition, she was asked a question about sexual assaults of women students on college campuses. Page five now, Obama's student loan forgiveness program and pandering to the youth. Support for Obama is tanking. He's losing support from the young, people who got him elected in the first place. Now he's trying to get them back so he can save his fellow Democrats in the midterm elections. Obama signed an executive order allowing five million more borrowers to qualify for the pay-as-you-go program. Obama's program caps student loan payments at 10% of income and forgives the balance in 10 years. That is, if you work in nonprofit or government government sector. If you work in the private sector, your loans will be forgiven after 20 years. It sounds nice, right? More sunshine from Team Obama in the political forecast? But it's overstated. It will help some, but it will leave many out in the cold. The estimated cost of this is, well, unknown. When asked, Education Secretary Arne Duncan said, quote, we actually don't know the cost yet. Interesting. So who's going to pay for all this? Meantime, the loan program really has nothing to do with students. You see, it's all about giving Democrats an issue to campaign on, to save them in November. And I want Americans to pay attention. Also, Democrats in the Senate, led by Senator Warren, are trying to push through another bill. This one would allow people to refinance their student loans. Republicans blocked it, but it may rear its ugly head again sometime soon. So who are the winners and losers when it comes to Obama's student loan program? Looks like this is more about rhetoric than from the left than it is about students. And joining me now from Washington, D.C., principal of Millennial Strategy Group and national committeeman of the D.C. Young Republicans and Daily Ledger contributor, Travis Corson. Travis, let's start with Obama's plan. Does this really help anyone out and address skyrocketing tuition prices? So Speaker Boehner criticized it, saying it really doesn't go to the core of the problem, which is these skyrocketing tuition prices. What do you make of this? Absolutely. So is this actually going to make tuition prices higher? You know, if it's going to be forgiven after 20 years, is there any real incentive to be price conscious? Are colleges seeing the dollar signs flashing in their eyes over this? Travis, what do you make of that? Absolutely. Now, Travis, I'm a recent graduate. I know you're a young Republican as well. So what is the solution? How can we really address this problem and get past these glorified talking points? At the end of the day, they are just 
empty promises once again. Thank you, Travis. I appreciate it. And coming up next, the grand old party, the Tea Party, and the future for Republicans as the Daily Ledger continues. Page six now, the 2014 midterm election. The battle is on between establishment Republicans and Tea Party candidates. The primary loss by House Majority Leader Eric Cantor sent shockwaves through Capitol Hill. And now the next big test for the Tea Party is in Mississippi. Mississippi's longtime Republican Senator Thad Cochran is facing a challenge from Tea Party back State Senator Chris McDaniel. The two are in a runoff election after neither one got half of the vote in the June 3rd primary. June 24th. So who will it be? Is David Bratt's win over Cantor a sign of what's to come? And what, if anything, can the GOP learn from Cantor's upset? Joining me now from our bureau in Washington, D.C., managing editor for, editor for Red Alert Politics, Chris Deaton. Chris, is this a sign of what's to come? So you had mentioned that Cantor partially lost because he had a little bit of a disconnect with his own people. A lot of people are also saying that part of the reason is because of his amnesty comments. What do you make of this? Do you think this was really an issue here? I guess we'll have to wait and see how this plays out, and we'll be keeping our eyes watching very closely on the Cochran-McDaniel race. Thank you, Chris. And coming up next, breaking down Obama's latest round of empty promises. Millennials, put down the cell phones, close your Instagram, and pay attention. This one's for you as The Daily Ledger continues. And welcome to the back page, the Benghazi scandal. The House Select Committee on Benghazi is working on its first order of business, a timeline. After that, the testimony phase will begin. Our ledger register, should the Select Committee on Benghazi subpoena President Obama? 93% say yes and 7% say no. Thank you for voting. Also, we want to hear from you. Please send us your comments to ledger at oann.com. We'd love the feedback. Also, follow the Daily Ledger on on Facebook and on Twitter. Some final thoughts now. What is the takeaway from this week's round of political football? Promises, empty promises. Obama promised to lessen U.S. dependence on oil in the Middle East. He promised higher salaries and affordable college educations. He promised equal pay for women. He promised transparency. He promised to work with Congress to end gridlock. He promised to finish the fight against Al Qaeda and the Taliban. He promised to prevent nuclear weapons in Iran. He promised to increase aid to veterans. He promised affordable and accessible health care for every single American. He promised immigration reform. The list goes on and on. Instead, what did we get? Well, we got excuses. For Graham and all of us here at The Daily Ledger, I'm Tommy Laren. Take care.